Hey there, McAllister here with Toasty DIY. This is the second part of my tutorial about Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So this will go over the basics of the navigations of the menus. I won't go in depth about what each tool does. I'm pretty much just gonna give a five second on what every tool does. Not the right click menus or anything like that. So starting with the top left, we have our navigation here. This is where you can select scenes and you can put them up in this bar and that way you can move through them and show your players towns, places, dungeons, whatever you want to show them. You can also hide it with the toggle navigation button. In the top left you'll find token controls which allows you to select your players and move them. With the select target tool you can let the players know who's being targeted by what. To undo it you click again. And the measure distance tool does exactly what it says, allows you to measure distance. The measurement controls is best used for spells or AOE effects. For instance we have circle, fireball would be that big, cone attack would be about this big, or maybe wall of force would be about this big, and a ray template would be about this big. You can make those different sizes depending on what you want, but if your screen gets cluttered, you can clear all of them at once. Under tile controls, you can use these to select tiles, move them, import them, or create them. Tiles will likely be something you'll buy on an online marketplace or create yourself if you want to. Drawing tools are exactly how they sound. It allows you to select your drawing for all of them, like a rectangle, which you can double click in order to change more in depth polygon tool, freehand, and the letter one. To type in here, you can't just type right away. You must click on it and go to text. The last button is configure drawing, which allows you to change your base color for your drawings. You want to clear all the drawings at one time. For instance, the battle's over. You can just hit clear drawing. Wall controls, I'll make a video probably just about these, but on basic, it allows you to draw walls so the tokens can't be dragged through unless it's you, the GM, or restricts line of sight for players that have vision cones. Under lighting sources, you have different lighting sources that'll like reset the fog of war if your players have discovered more of the map on accident than supposed to. We can transition to darkness to make the map darker. So you see it's slowly turning dark. We can transition back to daylight and we can clear all lights. You'll notice that lights is a more open-ended concept as it also could be used for things like fog down here. Next is music. If you want ambient sound in a room, you could throw down a this and maybe find a sound online that you like, like a dripping of water. And as the players near it, they'll hear the dripping. There's preview ambient sounds, which allow you to be in that area and hear it as if it's you. And then lastly is journal notes, where you can create little notes to yourself, like so. So if I clicked on this note, I could link it to a journal page and that would tell me more about it. You can also clear all the notes at one time. Moving on from these controls, we're gonna go down to the bottom left here where you can see your players. If, for instance, Zach was in my game and I wanted him to see where we are right now, I could pull him to the scene. I can also configure his account and other things, but this is a good way if your players are saying, I don't see what you're saying, you can pull them to you to make sure they are. Next to that, we have the macro hotbar. This is really easy and really nice. You can just set things up. So if I'm gonna run a dungeon that I know features a lot of kobolds, I know that kobolds have a sling and I wanna make sure that I can just roll for that really easy. So I'll say slash roll. This is the point where I have to put the command and I'll let it type in the chat because I'm not good at scripting, but you could do that if you wanted to. 1d4 plus two, that's for the damage. And then I wanna know if they hit. So I'll also tell it to roll 1d20 plus five. I'll save the macro. And now whenever I tap it, I'm automatically gonna get a roll in our chat log to the right, which will be going over here in a second. And I'll see 18 would hit and I did five damage. So you can set many pages of macros if you like and set them up as you like. You can also change the photo here if you wanna edit the macro. As for this panel on the side, we have the chat channel, which can be used to talk. If you're not good at doing voices, you may wanna select the creature that you want to talk. Hello, travelers. And notice it'll automatically zoom in on the character that's speaking for all players. And this could be an interesting way to have conversations between NPCs, and it even logs it in the chat as Air Elemental and Krusk. So do be careful before you type anything that you are not selected. To deselect anything easily, you can just hit escape. In the chat channel, you can also roll dice by just typing in slash roll and then what you'd like to roll and add whatever modifiers you'd like. If you like a breakdown, you can even click on it and it'll tell you what was rolled exactly. You can also roll privately if you'd just like to have one on screen. They cannot see this. For them, it'll appear as a roll has happened, but it'll show a a little question mark on it. Or you can do self-roll, which no one else can see but you. You can flush the chat log and remove everything by just tapping that button here. Or you can export it, say you want to save your game and everything that was said in case you do a text-based game. Next is the combat encounter. You can hit plus to begin tracking your combat. So now I can say I want to link it to this scene or unlink it to this scene. You can also reset the initiative or change the settings of it here. So tracking, different things, HP, secondary, primary movement. You can put those things on there if you like. The easy way to start people into initiative is right click them and then set them to combat state. And now automatically the air elemental, which is statted out, is input into that. If a player, however, has control of this token, then they can roll initiative on their own and it will automatically input them into initiative. And then all I have to do is click that. To end the initiative, you can hit the little trash can and it'll enter it and get rid of it. And you can start another encounter when you're ready. You can hit spacebar as well to pause so that your players don't move when they're not supposed to, if you'd like to. 
Next to that is the scenes button. You can create scenes by just tapping this button here, naming it, and then you can select things. The most important one usually is just to select a background image. This will be your map or what the players see, so it makes it more interesting that they have something to look at. Whenever you're ready, you hit save changes and it'll appear in navigation. If you have a dungeon, for instance, you'd like to put into a spot, you can just go ahead and make a folder for that, label it dungeon, and I can drag the scenes in here to hide them. So that way I don't have to have them open with all my other ones at any given time. In the actor scene, this is how you make your tokens. Here you can manipulate and move them by right clicking them. You can see all the settings. You can drag them straight onto here. And if you've set all their settings up before, they'll come in preloaded. I'm gonna be brief on this page because there's a lot you could do, but I'm gonna tell you the most important thing you can do, which is right click them and configure ownership. If this belongs to a player, for instance, it's Zach's character, I'm gonna set him as an owner and save changes. That way when this crusk arrives on the board, Zach can easily move, edit his settings, or double click him and see his health points and all that. It makes it very easy for him to do it. If you don't set it as theirs, they will not be able to move it, nor will they be able to see anything on the screen if they don't have a player present. Moving on to items, in this folder you can create items. Acts of, you know, slashing. I can type it in and create weapon. There we go, and I now said this axe does extra damage plus two. And everyone will know this came from homebrew, if I want them to know that. And details, I can say it's a simple weapon, hand axe, and Attunement is not required. When I'm ready, I can even change the picture by clicking up there and I'll go ahead and make it an explosion. Why not? And then if I'd like to, I can right click it and configure ownership and say all players may observe it. So they can come in here and see that the acts of slashing exists and it's in their keep. They may not have it on them because it's not equipped, but at least they know where it is and what it is. Here in the journal, you can create journals. You can create one for a player. So let's say we want Zach to have one. We type his name. All players can observe that Zach, he owns it. And now Zach can include maybe notes about sessions he'd like to have, or he can just keep this here for, for nothing if he doesn't want to use it. If you like, you can also create one, call it Note. And when the players inevitably decide to look through the room and, and try to find some secret things written by your Archmage, you can just go ahead and have one called Create the Page and say, this is a note. And boom, it'll display right here. So when the players find the note, you can right click it and configure your ownership to limited. And now they can see that note. In rollable tables, this is exactly what it sounds like, lets you create tables. So if you want one for wild magic, you'd create the table, say what it's for, and then you can start to write in all the things that can happen. Maybe you want to do a uh, trinket table so they can search bodies and possibly find gold to a mummified finger, whatever you want to do. Card stacks are similar to rolling tables. You can create one and then set up the special things it can do. So let's call this one just a dragon for maybe a card game we'd like. And let's just go ahead and make it a poker deck. Hit OK. You can shuffle and then you'd have to create a hand in order to deal, but we're not gonna get into that today. Here in the playlist, you can go through and import any sounds you'd like, and that way you could create ambient music for your players if you wanted to have it play across for everybody just to have something in the background. Or if you want just sound effects for your dungeon, you can put them in here. The compendium area in the 5e setup comes full of a few things, which is nice. Uh, specifically SRD monsters. I can go ahead and take anything. As you see, I have the bearded devil right here. I can drag it in. And the nice thing is when I left click it, I get everything it needs. And the nice part is the features section where I see glaive. If I click the dice, it'll actually pop up in my chat and I can see here, but players can see this as well. So warning, if you don't want to know the special effects of the bearded devil, then you shouldn't want to tap this button and bring it in here unless you're on GM only, private GM role. And now I see it's a light blue, which means I know it's hidden from them. And lastly is your settings. We can go through this another time, but this is where you'd go through to find, most importantly, your settings right here, the ability to go to user management, and the ability to use invitation links. And that's gonna be it for this basic overview. You should now know where to find most things in case you look up a tutorial and it says, go here, look for this. You should at least know the names of the different tiles and the different places to look. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna to try to do a more in-depth tutorial. I think the first controls I'll set with and look at is walls, because Looking at that and making sure they're working will keep you from accidentally revealing traps or hidden rooms or other things. And also let you set up doors that you can actually click to open or close for your players. And it can be a good time. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and I appreciate you. Peace.